Okay, in this video I will highlight um, a process that I'm developing to make kind of a smooth offset surface for slightly complicated uses like making a denture base or making a custom tray. Um, the ability to make kind of a high quality mesh without self-intersections is very difficult, whereas the tools to make kind of an okay mesh with kind of rough edges are very easy. So I'll go over a couple of the challenges involved and then what I think I've done to uh, circumvent those challenges. All right, so here we have a master cast of a, for a complete denture and what we might want to do is trim out just this part which I've done using the poly trim previously and in this case I've trimmed it at the length of the cast so this is what we'd like the intaglio surface of our denture to look like or of our custom tray plus or minus a little offset. Okay, When we actually need to start fabricating a denture in 3D, we need a surface with non-zero thickness. So this is just thin like a piece of paper, but we'd like it to look as if there was wax draped all over the cast. So Blender has a great tool for that called Solidify Modifier. And I think usually we like two millimeters of base plate wax, maybe three. So we'll do 2.5. And Y. There we go. I need a second to update. And we'll offset it in the positive direction. So there. So there's what the, in, the inside surface of the denture looks like. That looks great. Um, and the top surface looks pretty decent, like a good place that we could start. However, at the transition of the land to the base plate, we get lots of really rough and uneven geometry, and if we take a slice from it, we get problems here with self-intersections. Okay, we even have some self-intersections within the inside surface, and up here where they're kind of the palatal rugae and the incisive papilla, I think we get more of the same. Okay, so this is a very messy mesh. It doesn't sculpt well, and a lot of times it won't 3D print well. So let's remove that modifier. So one thing we've tried in the past to circumvent that is to trim, trim the model at the vestibule. Okay, and in that way, when everything offsets, you don't re-intersect back on itself. So let's do the same thing here. Point five millimeter offset. For some reason, we're having to tab in now. So this does it a little bit better um, in terms of we don't have as many self intersections. We still self intersect all over in the the gingival detail. But one problem is that we don't get the nice rolled border, and that was part of the whole point of border molding. So this denture loses some of the anatomical importance or important features that are, in my opinion, critical for a good clinical outcome. So this might be good for a custom tray. Um, the user could just smooth this down with a burr, or you could spend about five minutes sculpting it in 3D to smooth that down. But either way, um, this result, in my opinion, is not satisfactory for making a prosthetic denture base. Okay, so how do we kind of get the best of both worlds? So we're going to take a break here for a moment, and and we're going to show you something called a metaball. And the cool thing about metaballs is that they are a volumetric thing. So they kind of have this property where they don't get turned into a mesh until the very end. So they have this nice kind of clay, melted wax, bubble-like quality. And so all I'm doing now is duplicating a bunch of metaballs in space, and we get this kind of even surface. And then when you're ready to use this, you convert it to mesh. Okay, and now we see if we go into edit mode, we have this... Um, 
this mesh object. Okay, and all the metaballs are still there. So let's hide the mesh, select all the metaballs, delete them. And we'll delete our mesh too. So what I would like to do is instead of trying to offset this surface at every single vertex, it's just kind of evenly space some metaballs all along it and let those kind of melt together like wax. So I will hide this, make a duplicate of that so that we can come back to it. Now this particular mesh has uh, 79,000 verts and they're really not tightly put together and so we don't want to add a metaball at every single one of those. So what we'll do here is we'll start by just reduce, reducing the amount of detail in the mesh using the decimate modifier if I can find it. Okay, and just go down to 1% of the amount of verts that we had previously. Okay, so that should give us, uh, if we come in here, uh, bummer. Okay, let's apply this. Go into edit mode. The metaballs need to be about half the distance of their radius from each other to kind of make a smooth surface where they intersect. So if we want to do a two and a half millimeter offset, we would like our metaballs to be about one and a quarter millimeters apart. So let's see how long these are. Okay, so let's undo everything that we just did there. Okay, and let's do 5%. That will should give us a little more. Okay, and that leaves us with 7,000 faces. And now our edges are good, about, about 2 millimeters on average. That should work. So I need to find a good way to, to decimate this predictably. All right, now we're going to get a little tricky here. Um, I'm going to code by hand. We're going to make a new metaball. Um, we're going to make a new metaball object, and its name will be base and its data will be the metaball that we just made and we will link that new object to the scene okay so now we have the denture base metaball object and scaffolding that we're going to use to add a metaball will be this object's data, which I'm using the C shortcut to get context. Okay, and now for every vert in this mesh's collection of vertices, It's going to be a two millimeter offset, so we're going to add a, a four millimeter wide sphere or a sphere with a radius of two millimeters. So we're going to add the radius of two, and we want that metaball coordinate to be the same as the vertex coordinate. Okay, now this is going to take a little while because it's going to add several, a couple thousand metaballs, I think. 
maybe between one and two. I, I didn't check the the density or the, the number of verts in the base mesh, but let's just hit enter here and let the computer think. That was actually very fast. Um, and the only thing I haven't done is this uh, this mesh right here is rotated and scaled or rotated and moved. So let's record its location in a matrix. Now we'll switch to this object and set its matrix to the other one. Okay, so now they're together and we've got this kind of lumpy but pretty good looking surface. I think we could have made um, this a little smoother. So what we can do is we can make these meta balls a little bigger or we can make them a different type capsule or a flat thing so let's just make them a little bigger for now okay, so four and be in meta dot elements and be dot radius equals 2.5 okay so that'll take few seconds and there that should make it a little smoother looking okay now the fun part so we can if we go to wireframe mode we see that this is a very dense mesh so we can turn this up a little bit That makes it a little smoother and a little more coarse. Now you may be wondering, well, what about all the nice detail in here? So that, um, let's let's take a look at the very the master cast here and see how we're doing. Good. And we're really not overflowing the vestibule, so we could make it a little wider, and that's something that you could do with sculpting. So now we will convert this. gets rid of all the meta balls and let's use flat shading we can see exactly what it looks like and now to recapture all of the data in here that we want we'll add a boolean modifier and just subtract out the master cast a very cool thing about this is because of the way metaballs work, um, there are no self-intersections. Um, this mesh gets calculated kind of from a volume. And this will take a moment because it's a little bit of a complex Here we have our nicely formed, kind of very detailed wax base. And you can see in the places where I trimmed too low, I mean too, um, sorry, too high out of the vestibule, we don't get the nice roll that we want. So that's going to be something where you have to be good or, or prudent in your uh, trimming of the initial shell that you're going to use to make this. But my goal is to just have you trim the outline, and then all those steps get done automatically. So now you can take this into apply that. Take this in sculpt mode.
start building your wax rim. side we're working pretty slowly there but let me increase the strength here and do a little plane offset And that we can pro we could probably build our wax rim with the metaball as well, and that would be my next uh, kind of my next task after doing this. Oh, and one thing to do is we I forgot to click front faces only on this brush, and now I've ruined the inside of our denture. But um, so more on that later. Right, but that's the goal here is to make that the an automated process and then give you something very easy to sculpt with.